Go ahead and open up your Bibles with me to Joshua today, Joshua chapter 3. And take a long course on my Bible, Lahti Joosua kirjast ja kolmandas peandukis. Joshua chapter 3. Joosua kolm. And we're going to turn here and read some verses here today in just a few moments. Ja me kohe, mõne hetke pärast hakkame siin lõuema mõni kõid salme. But today is our second part in our series that we've entitled Tips to Walk in Your Promise. Aga täna meil on nii-öelda teine osa ühes seeres, mille nimeks on Näpu näite, et käimaks oma tõotuses. And we're using... How God led Israel into the Promised Land as our example. And Thomas in Nightex, selle kuidas Jumal juhatas oma valitud rahva siis oma siis teotatud maale. And so the reason I'm doing this. And please, mix me the answer. Is the Bible tells us this. Zeh pibi rutlab meile ni. It says that the the things in the Old Testament were written for an example to us. Et need asja, mis on kirjas vanast testamendis, on kirjas seal meie jaoks. And they are things that we can learn from. Ja need on asjad, milles me võime õppust võtta. And then apply to our lives today. Ja rakendada enda elus tänasel päeval. And so I want to do a quick review here this morning. Tahan kiiresti üle minna eelnevatest asjadest. And we started looking last week of how Israel was in captivity in Egypt. Ja me vaatasime eelmine nädala seda, kuidas Israelased olid siis vangistuses. They were in slavery. Nad olid orjapõlves. And so God called Moses to be raised up and to set them free. Ja Jumal kutsus Mooses, et tema tõuseks üles ja vabastaks nad. And he was called to lead them out of Egypt. Ja Jumal kutsus tema selleks, et nemad juhataks nad välja sellest Egiptusest. And we see that there were miracles that took place. Ja seal loos on ka näidatud erinevad imesi, mis Jumal tegi. And there were plagues that took place. Ja seal olid katkud. And the plagues would come upon the Egyptians, but they would not come upon the Israelites. Ja need katkud tulid siis Egiptlaste peale, aga mitte Israelaste peale. And so we see that these things began to open the door for them to leave. See ka me võime näha, et need asjad avasid neile selle ukse, et nad võisid lahkuda seal. And finally Pharaoh had had enough and he said, all right, go. Ja lõpuks oli vaarevalt viland ja ütles neile, et te võite minna. And he let Israel leave Egypt. Ja ta lasi Israelaste lahkuda Egiptuse maal. And soon after he made the decision to let them go, he regretted that decision. Ja hiljem, kui ta oli otsustanud, et ta laseb neil minna, ta kahetses seda valikult. And so he went to go get them back and he sent out his army after Israel. Ja siis ta üritas neile järgi minna ja saates oma armee neile järgi. And so here then the army trapped the Israelites at the Red Sea. Ja siin punase mere ääres egiptlase armee pani siis Iisraelas niimoodi lõksu. And when they're at the Red Sea, Moses here, he gets a little nervous. Ja punase mere ääres Mooses muutub natukene närviliseks. Because God told him to leave Egypt, but he didn't tell him really how to escape everything. Sest Jumal oli öelnud Moosesele, et nad läheksid Egiptuse maalt välja, aga ta täpselt ei teanud plaani, täpselt mis teepid ja kuidas. And so Moses cries out to God and says, God, do something. Sega Mooses siis kutsub api Jumala, et ütlevad, tee midagi. And Moses said no, You do something. Ja Jumal ütles, ei Mooses, sina tee midagi. Use what I've already given to you. Kasuta seda, mis mina olen sulle juba annud. And so the story goes that Moses lifted up his rod and the Red Sea parted. Ja siis lugu läheb edas siis niimoodi, et Mooses tõstis üles oma selle pudu kepi ja punane meri läks kaheks. And the Israelites crossed on dry ground the Red Sea. Ja Israelased said läbi minna sellest kuival maal. And so Pharaoh then sent his army in after them. Ja siis Varao saatis oma armee neile järgi. And when the Pharaoh's army was in the middle of the Red Sea, the Red Sea collapsed and destroyed his army. Ja kui Varao armee oli seal punase mere selles vahe käigus, siis Jumal lasi seal veel uuesti kokku tulla ja see armee jäi sinna vahele. And so the Bible tells us that that Israel coming out of Egypt is like salvation for us. It's a picture of our salvation. Piivel tohmile näite, et see, kuidas Israelased pääsesid Egiptuse maalt, on näide sellest, milline on meie pääste. That we are no longer in that old life, but we come into a new life. Et me ei ole enam selles vanas elus, vaid me oleme tulnud uud ellu. We are no longer slaves to sin. Me ei ole enam orjad patule. But that we have life before given to us by Jesus Christ. Vaid Jeesus Kristus on meile annud elu. But then the desert, it has its place. Aga sellel kõrbel on ka oma koht. And Israelite, then they wander the desert for years. Ja Israelased, nüüd kõnsid seal kõrbes aastaid. And then they come to the promised land. Ja nad jõuavad sinna tõrtatud maale. And once they get to the promised land, then then they send in the spies. Ja kui nad jõuavad sinna tõrtatud maale, siis nad saatsid sinna 
Võisin nad tõtud maa äärele, nad satsid oma spioonid sinna. And they go in and check out the land to see if it's like God said it was. Ja nad saasid nad sisse, et nad vaadaksid, kas see maa on täpselt selline, nagu Jumal oli neile tõotanud ja kirjeldanud. And to nobody's surprise, it was exactly like God said that it was. Ja üllatus, üllatus oli täpselt selline, nagu Jumal oli neile luvanud. And so then, then they come back and they say it's exactly what God said, but... There's giants that live there. Ja siis nad tulid tagasi, ütlesid Iisraelest, oli jaa, see on täpselt selline nagu Jumal lubas, aga seal on hiiglased. And there's no way that we could take this land. Ja ei ole mingit viisi, kuidas me saaksime selle endale võtta. And so ten spies came back and said, no, it's too much for us. Sega kümmes pioonid tulid tagasi, ütlesid, et see on liiga palju meie jaoks. But there were two spies that came back and said, no, God said we could take it. We can take it. Aga kaks pioonid tulid tagasi ja ütlesid, et Jumal ütles, et me võime selle võtta endale ja me saame selle võtta. And the two spies that, that were believing God's word, one was named Joshua, the other guy was named Caleb. Ja ühe nimi oli Kaleb, teise nimi oli Joosua, need kaks pioonid, kes uustusid seda. And so the desert is, is kind of a symbol for us in our lives. Ja see kõrb on otsa kui sümbol meie elus. It was meant for them to be a time of learning, to put their trust in God. Et see oli aeg, kus nad pidid panema nii-öelda usald, õppima usaldama Jumalat. And it's meant for, for, for many of us in, in a growing time and learning how much God loves us and what God has for us. Ja paljude meie jaoks on see, see õppeperiood, kus me mõistame seda, kui väga Jumal armastab meid ja... And how much he cares for us. Ja kui palju ta hoolib meist. It's how he shows, it's where he shows his faithfulness to us. See on koht, kus ta näitab oma ustavust meile. So that we learn that we are his children. Et me võime õppida seda, et me oleme tõesti tema lapsed. And, and, uh, but Israel... In that time in the desert, they didn't learn their lesson that they should have learned. Aga iisraelased sellel ajaperioodil kõrbes ei õppinud seda õppetundi, mis nad pidid õppima. And even though God miraculously took care of them, ja kuigi Jumal ime kombel kandis hoolt nende eest, they didn't trust God to go into the land that he promised. Nad ei usalnud Jumala, et piisavalt, et minna sinna taadatud maale. And so... The promised land then is a different picture for us. Sega see tõõdatud maa on teissugune pilt meie elus. The promised land is a picture of the blessings of God. Tõõdatud maa siis räägib meie õnnistustest. The blessings that Jesus provides for us today as a believer. Need on õnnistused, mis Jeesus varustab meile tänasel päeval kui justlikena. It's a type of this abundant life that comes to us through Jesus. See on osa sellest üle küllustlikust elust, mis tuleb meile läbi tema. And it's an example of a victorious Christian life that you and I can live today. Ja see on näide võidukas kristlase elust, mida iga üks meist võib elada. And so we are to come out of the desert of unbelief Sega me peaksime välja tulema selle uskmatuse kõrbest. And we are to come into the, the fullness of God in our life. Ja peaksime nii-öelda jumaliku täiusesse sisenema. We are to come into the promises that he has for us. Me peaksime võtma osa nendest õnnistuses, mis või tõotud tõotustest, mis temal on meie jaoks. And the promises that Jesus paid for for us to walk in. Ja need tõotused, mille eest Jeesus suri, et me ei saaksime käia nendes. And in today in the church, there's really, there's two kinds of people. Aga tänapäeval koguduses on kahte tüüpi inimesi. There's the, there's the desert group of people and then there's the promised land group of people. On selline grup inimesi, kes on selles kõrbes ja on selline grup inimesi, kes käivad endes tõotustes. And every Christian basically fits into one of those two categories. Ja tegelikult iga kristane mahub kummagisse nendesse kategooriasse. And some Some, you know, they kind of cross back and forth in different areas of their life. Ja, ma need inimesed niimoodi käivad edasi tagasi nende kahe maa vahel oma elu erinevates valdkondades. And how many know in different areas of your life you could have different levels of trust in your God? Ja, kui põlid teavad, et oma elu erinevates valdkondades sul võib olla erinev tase usaldust Jumalas. You know, for an example, someone could have great faith in God and in His promises concerning their business. Näiteks, ühel inimesel võib olla väga suured väga suur usk Jumala suhtes oma äris. And they could be walking in the promise and everything going well financially. Ja nad võivad käia tõotuses ja neil kõik finansiliselt läheb väga hästi. But when it comes to their physical health, aga mis puudutab nende füüsilist tervist, maybe they question God's will. Siis nad võibolla panevad küsimuse alla Jumala tahte, Jumala sõna. They know God heals, but I don't know if God's going to heal me. Ma tean, et Jumal teeb terveks, aga ma ei tea, kas Jumal teeb mind terveks. And they kind of walk in the desert of unbelief in that area of their life. Ja selles eluvalkonnas käivad selles usmatuse kõrb. And so in every area of our life, we're either walking in the promises or we're, we're in unbelief. Sega igas elu valkonnast me kas kõnnime uustmatuses või siis kõnnime usus. And the desert people, they just kind of live in the, in the suffering and complaining stage of life. Ja need, kes käivad seal kõrbes, need on selles perioodis, kus nad virisevad ja vinguvad kõikid asja tule. But the promised land people, they live differently. Aga need inimesed, kes elavad sellest tõutatud maal, elavad teismoodi. They live saying, I believe I can have 
what God said I could have. Ja öeldes, et ma usun, et mulle kuulub see, mida Jumal on mulle teatanud. And so the question is this is what group are you going to be in? Küsimus on selles, et kumba gruppi sina kuulud? Are you going to be in the desert of unbelief people or are you going to be in the promised land people? Kas sa tahad olla selles kõrbes olevat, olevas grupis või selles grupis, kes kõnib teatustes? Will you believe God to give you his very best in your life? Kas sa usud Jumalalt, et tema annab sulle kõige paremat selle elu jaoks? Or is it hard for you to believe that what the Bible says is reality for you? on raske uskuda, et see, mida piibel sulle tõotab, vastab tõele. And so, uh, here in this story of, of, of the Israelites, Sega selles loos, mis räägib Israelastest, we're going to jump ahead now 40 years. Ja me nüüd hüppame edasi 40 aastat. And, and it is time now for Joshua to lead Israel to go into the promised land. Ja nüüd on aeg Joosual juhatada nii-öelda Israelase, et sellele tõotavad maale. And it's going to be challenging and it's going to be dangerous. Ja see on väga suur väljakutse ja see on väga ohtlik. It's going to look at times like it's impossible. Kohati võib see tunduda väga võimatu. But as we saw last week, uh, there was a word that was given to Joshua. Aga, aga nagu me eelmisel nädalal vaatasime Joosule anti sõna. And God told it to him. Ja Jumal ütles talle. Moses told it to him. Ja Mooses ütles talle seda. And the tribe leaders told it to him. Ja nende hõimud juhid ütlesid Joosule seda. They said, Joshua, you be strong and courageous. Nüüd see talle, ole tugev ja ole julge. And we saw that that was our first tip to walk in in our promise. Ja see oli meie esimene see näpuneide, selleks, et käia meie, meie tõõt. Is that we would be strong and courageous. Me oleksime tugevad ja et me oleksime julged. That we wouldn't allow the devil to cause us to, to fear and doubt. Et me ei lumaks saatanale tuua endas välja hirmu ja kahtlusi. And, and this, is, this is why... Uh, we, we need to be strong and courageous. Ja põhjus, miks me, see on põhjus, miks me peaksime olema nii tuevad kui ka julged. Is we do have an enemy. There's going to be giants standing between you and your promise. Meil on vaenlane ja sinu tõotuste vahel seisavad hiiklased. And, and there's going to be obstacles to try to keep you from walking in the blessings of God. Erinevad takistused üritavad takistada sind, et sa ei käiks nendest tõotustest. And so you're going to have battles that you're going to need to fight. Sega sul on vaja võidelda laenguid. And there's going to be an enemy that's going to try to prevent you from going into some good things in life. Ja, ja, ja sul on vaenlane, kes üritab takistada sulle, jõuda nende... nende He's going to prevent you from going into the good things of life. Et et takistab sind, et sa ei siseneks nendesse elu headesse asjadesse. And so the devil has a strategy. Ja saatan on strategia. To take away your strength and your courage. Et võtta sult ära sinu jõud ja sinu julgus. Because if you lose your strength and courage. Kas kui sina kaotad oma tugevuse ja julguse. You are not going to walk in the promises that God has spoken over us. Siis sa ei kõnni nendest tõutustest, mis Jumal on sul annud. And so, so here we have to fight the fight of faith to Siin walk in blessings. Selleks, et käia õnnistustest, meil on vaja uh, võidelda usuvõitlust. And, and you're going to need to be strong and you're going to need to be courageous to win that fight. Ja selleks, et võita seda, sa pead olema tugev ja sa pead olema julge. But, uh, you know, they looked at Joshua to be strong and courageous for them. Aga nimelt maatasid Joosua peale, et tema oleks nende eest tugev ja julge. And for our lives, we've seen this. Ja oma eludes me oleme näinud seda. We've seen that we need to determine that we're going to obey God in every situation. Me oleme näinud seda, et meil on vaja kindlaks teha, et me kuuletume Jumalale igas eh, how many of you determined to obey God? Kui paljud on veendunud selles, et sa tahad kuuletada Jumalale igasel valkonnas? I'm determined to obey God in every situation. Ma olen veendunud selles, et mina tahan kuuletada Jumalale igasel olukorras. Now I'm not perfect. Ma ei ole nüüd täiuslik. And neither are you. Ja sina ka ei ole. But we are doing our very best. Aga me anname enda parima. We're determining our with all of our heart, with all of our life. Et me kinnitame enda eluga oma südamega. That we will do are 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 the the very best to have what God promised us. Et me anname enda parima selleks et et saa seda mis Jumal on parim on meie jaoks. That we will go where God wants us to. Et me go. läheme sinna kui Jumal on kutsunud meid minema. And whatever the word says. Ja mida iganes Jumal sõna ütleb meile. That needs to be the the the, the way that we choose to live our lives. Et see peab olema see viis kuidas me otsustame elada enda elus. And so you making a decision to obey God is necessary. See ka vajalik on see et sina otsustaksid et sa tahad järgida Jumala. And you're going to have opportunity to quit and to give up. Ja sul tuleb võimalusi, kus sa võid alla anda ja ja jätta asjad sinna paika. And you just need to know that right now. Aga sul on praegu teada seda. There's going to be opportunities to to give up and to not go forward. Et sul tuleb võimalusi, kus sa võid seisma jääda ja sa ei liigu edasi. But you need to determine in your heart you're going to be a doer 
of the word. That you determine in your heart you will fulfill the plan of God for your life. And that you are not going to let the devil take away from you what, what, what Jesus has provided for you. And so this is, this is where, where we as a believer stand on this. And if, if, if you are, you know, we're not just talking about being a Christian. We're talking about being a doer of the word. And just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you automatically have the, the blessings of life. But I guarantee you as a doer of the word, you're going to see the blessings of God in And so it, it's, it's not going to be an easy road. It's going to be a fight of faith. But if you will fight that fight, I guarantee you, you're going to have great blessings in your life. And so... Uh, as, as we get in here today in Joshua chapter 3, and let me just tell you, you're going to feel so good and so holy by the time we leave here today. Because we're going to read almost two chapters in the Bible. And you're just going to feel like, man, we really accomplished a lot. But today I want to talk about how Israelites crossed the Jordan river into the promised land. Because once you step out in faith, this is the next step. Once you determine that you're going to be a doer of the word of God, the next step is to do it. Right? And so you can determine all day long, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But the next thing you need to do is take that step of faith and follow what God has asked you to do. And so we pick up here in Joshua chapter 3 and in verse 1. It says, early in the morning, Joshua and the Israelites sent out from Shitmit uh, and went to the the Jordan where they camped beside the cross camped before crossing over. Joosua kolm üks ja Joosua tõusis hommikul vara ja nad läksid teele sitimist ning tulid Jordani äärde. Tema ja kõik Iisraeli lapsed ja nad ööbsid seal enne kui nad üle läksid. And after three days the officers went throughout the camps giving the order to the people when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God the priest of the, of the Levites carrying it you are to move out of your positions and you are to follow it. Kolme päeva pärast, aga käisid ülevaadajad leeri läbi ja andsid rahvale käsu öeldes, kui te näete isanda oma Jumala seadusel aegast ja le- leviit preestreid seda kandvad, siis minge oma asukohast teele ja käige selle järel. And then you will know which way to go since you have not been this way before, but keep a distance of about, uh, 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 I guess, a kilometer away from it between you and the ark and do not go near it. Um, aga teie ja selle vahel olgu vahet umbes 2000 mõõdetud küünard, te ei tohi minna selle ligi, et te teaksite teed, mis teil tuleb käia, sest varem te ei ole seda teed käinud. And so here they were given instruction about what to do on this day. That they were to go and follow the ark wherever the ark went. And for the Israelites, this was something unusual. Because the ark was usually undercover, it was usually uh, in the tabernacle. Uh, sest, uh, in the tent. Uh, see, uh, it was it was not really out something that was usually out in the open. And until this point, the children of Israel they did not follow the ark. The Bible says that they follow, followed a pillar of cloud by the day and a pillar of fire by night. And so, so that's how they, they, 
knew when to move. Et see oli viis, kuidas nad teadsid, millal nad pidid liikuma. But now we're going to see the picture change a little bit. Ja siin me näeme, kuidas pilt natukene muutub. And now they're instructed to follow the ark. Nüüd antakse neile käsk seda laegast, selle laegele järgi minna. And for us, this should have some great meaning as a Christian. Meie jaoks kristlasena see peaks tähendama midagi tohutud. Because what the ark represents here is Jesus. Sest mida see laegas meie jaoks tähendab või siis sümboliseerib on Jeesus. Because the ark was made of wood. Ja see laegas oli tehtud puidust. And then it was covered in gold on the inside and on the outside. Ja see oli kaetud nii seespidiselt kui välispidiselt kullaga. And this is a picture of Jesus being fully human but being fully God. Ja see on pilt Jeesusest, kes oli nii-öelda täielikult inimene, aga täielikult ka Jumal. And they were to follow the ark and they were to stay about a kilometer away Ja nad pidid järgnema sellele laekale ja olema mingi kilometri kaugusel sellest. And it's the same way as we are to follow Jesus as our example in our own lives. See on viis, kuidas me peaksime järgima ka Jeesust enda elus. You know, John chapter 14 tells us, Jesus said this. Johannes 14, Jeesus ütles nii. He said, the works that I do, you will also do. Ja need teod, mida mina teen, seda teete ka teie. And greater works than these, because I'm going to my Father. Ja suuremaid tegusid, kui mina selle pärast, et mina lähen isa juurde. And so Jesus, he led the way to show us how to live as an example for us. Jeesus kõndis meie eel, et meil oleks enne eeskuju, millele järgida. And, you know, when we look at Jesus' life, we see that his needs were always met. Ja kui me vaatame Jeesus elus, me näeme, et tema vajadused olid aati kaetud. We see that he had authority over sickness and, and disease in his life. Me näeme seda, et tal oli meelevalt haiguste ja tõbede üle enda elus. And that he was full of joy and he was full of peace. Ja ta oli täis rõõmu ja täis rahu. He had the, the wisdom of God in his life. Jumala tarkus oli tema elus. And so, he, we, we see that, that he was a great example for us as a Christian. And there are promises that I believe that God has waiting for you. Ja ma usun, et on tõotused, mis Jumalal on ootamas sind. If, if you will put your faith in Jesus. Kui sina paned oma usu Jeesusesse. If you will determine in your life to be a doer of the word. Kui sa oled kindla veendumusega, et sina tahad olla Jumala sõna tegija. And, and if we will follow God, he will lead us to some great things. Ja kui me järgime Jeesusele, siis, siis tema viib meid suurtase paikades. Now let's keep reading here in Joshua 3 and verse 5. Loeme edasi viiendas salmis samas peadükis. And, and it says, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Ja Joosua ütles rahvale, pühitsege endid, sest homme teeb isand tee keskil ime tegusid. They were to consecrate themselves. Na pidid siis pühitsema endid. They, they were to make this, this a moment of, okay, God, I know that, that I'm yours and you are mine. Nad pidid nüüd võtma selle hetki, kus nad tunnistavad Jumala, jah, Jumal, et, et ma tean, et sina oled minuga ja mina olen sinuga. And they were to get ready to be doers of the word. Ja nad pidid nüüd valmistama ennast ette selleks, et olla nüüd sõnategijad. And this is important because if we are not doers of the word, ja see on tähtis sellepärast, et kui meie ei ole sõnategijad, then God has really nothing to work with in us. Siis Jumalal ei ole ming, millegi ka nüüd vaevenaha või mingit tööd meie sellest teha. But if we are doers of the word, we can expect supernatural things to happen in our lives. Aga kui me oleme sõna tegijad, siis me võime oodata üle loomulike asju enda elus. Jeremiah says this. Jeremiah ütleb nii. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah 1. And verse 12. Ja 12 salm. It says that the Lord watches over his word. Ütleb, et isand vaatama oma sõna üle. To fulfill it. Selleks, et see saaks täide minna. He's not watching over you to fulfill his word. Tema ei vaata sinu üle selleks, et täide vii oma sõna. God is watching over his word. Jumal vaatab oma sõna üle. Excuse me. God is watching over his word to fulfill the word. Selleks... He's watching over the word and, and he will do that. Ta vaatab oma sõna üle ja vaatab, et see sõna saaks tehtud. In Mark chapter 16. Markus 16. And in verse 10. Ja 10. salmis. It says that the disciples, they went out. Ütleb, et apostid läksid välja. And, and the Lord was with them. Ja isand oli koos nendega. And he confirmed the word with signs and miracles. Ja tema kinnitas... Uh, uh, Tema kinnitas oma sõna ime tegudega. And so Jesus' word was, was, was what the power was. Sega Jeesuses sõnas oli vägi. It was, Jesus was the word and became flesh. Jeesus oli sõna ja tema sai lihaks. And, and so when he is the word, ja kui tema on sõna, we see the word is the source of power. Siis me näeme, et see sõna on see väeallikas. The word of God is the source of power for you and your life. Jumala sõna on väeallikas sinu ja sinu elu jaoks. And so we've got to know that God is with us. Sega meil on vaja teada, et Jumal on minuga. And we need to continually consecrate ourselves to 
the Lord and to the Word. Ja me peaksime pidevalt nii-öelda pühitsime ennast Jumalale ja Jumala sõnale. You know, the, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1. Piibel ütleme, mille Roomast kirjas esimesest peadükis. Verse 16. Ja kui teistnud salmis. Uh, Paul's writing there and this is what he said. Paulus kirjutab seal ja ütleb nii. He said this, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ja ütleme, mina ei häbene Jeesuse Kristuse evangeeliumit. And we know Jesus is the Word. Ja me teame, et Jeesus on sõna. And he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God to salve, that leads to salvation. It's a mina e e habene you ma I don't I'm not ashamed of the gospel. My habene is that the evangelium is that Jesus it is the power of God. It's on Jumala vägi. It is the power of God. So Jumala vägi selle pärast. That leads to salvation. Is vibe pastele. Amen. Amen. And so this the word is the power. See ka see sõna on vägi. And and we see that we consecrate ourselves to the word. Ja me näeme, püh- and this is a way that we submit ourselves to God. Ja see on viis, kuidas me nüüd alistame Jumalale. Is by submitting ourselves and consecrating ourselves to his word. On läbi selle, et me alistame tema sõnale ja pühitsime ennast tema sõnale. Now let's keep reading here with verse 6. Loeme edasi kuuendas peadukist. It says, and Joshua said to the priest, take up the ark of the covenant and press ahead, uh, press ahead of the people. And so they took it up and went ahead of them. Ja Joosa rääkis pressitega öeldes, kandke seaduse laegast ja mingi rahva eel. Ja nemad tõssid seaduse laega üles ning käisid rahva eel. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of Israel, and they will know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Ja Isand ütles Joosuale, Täna ma teen sind suureks kogu Israeli silmis, et nad teaksid, et mina olen sinuga nõnda nagu ma olin Moosesega. Tell the priest to carry the Ark of the Covenant when you reach the edge of the Jordan waters and go and stand in the river. Käsi peesseid, kes kannavad seaduse laegast ja ütle, kui te jõuate Jordani vee äärde, siis jääge peatuma Jordani kaldale. And so Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the word of the Lord your God. Ja Joosa ütles Iisraeli lastele, tulge siia ja kuulge Issanda oma Jumala sõnu. And this is how you will know that the living God is among you. Ja Joosa kõneles, sellest saate teada, et elav Jumal on tee keskel. And so he's saying this. Ja ta ütleb siin nii. He's saying what we're about to see happen with the power of the ark. Et mida me nüüd saame nägema läbi selle laeka väe. The miracles that we are about to see. Et need imed, mida me kohe saame nägema. This is how we are going to know that God is with us. Et see on viis, kuidas me teame, et Jumal on koos meiega. And it's from the ark going through the Jordan. Ja see on märk sellest, et Jordan läheb läbi Jordani. When the, when the ark of the covenant goes, goes into the river. Kui see seal laegas läheb sinna Jordani õlke. That is how you will know that God is with you. Sellest, et teate seda, et Jumal on koos teiega. And now let's, let's kind of skip down here to verse 13. Ja läheme edasi 13. salmi juurde. And it says, and as, the, as soon as the priest who carried the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set their foot into the Jordan, its waters uh, flowing downstream will, will be cut off and it will stand in a heap. Nii pea kui nende preestriti jalad allad, kes kannavad isanda kogu maailma isanda seaduse laegast, laskuvad Jordani vette, katkeb Jordani vee vool, vesi, mis voolab ülapool, jääb seisma paisu taha. And so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Ja rahvas läks oma telkide, te, telkides teele, et minna üle Jordani ja pereestrid, kes kantsid seaduse laegast, olid rahva eel. And now the Jordan was at flood stage during the harvest. Does it say that? Uh, at the very end of 15. Okay, I'll read it. Uh, yet, at, uh, um, let's see, during the harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan, their, their feet touched, uh, and their feet touched the waters, water's edge. Ja nii pea kui need, kes kantsid laegast ja jõudsid Jordani äärde ja laegast kandvad preestete jalad puudutsid vee peri, kõik Jordani luhad on ju vett täis kogu lõikusaja. Isn't this kind of how it seems sometimes in our lives? Et kas, kas ei tundu meie elus vahes samamoodi? When we're getting ready to do something that just seems impossible. Et kui me valmistume nii-öelda tegema midagi, mis paistab täiesti võimatu. But we're ready, we're saying, okay, I'll, I'll believe God for that. Aga me nii-öelda, nii-öelda valmistume ütleme, et okei, okay, ma usun Jumalat sees. And all of a sudden it turns into something that looks even more impossible. Ja järsku see tundub äh, otsa kui veel võimatum, kui see siia mani on tundunud. You ever had that happen in your life? On sul sellist asja juhtunud sinu elus? You're ready to take a step. Et sa valmis võtma sammu. And, and you're thinking, oh, this isn't going to look very, I don't know, but I'm trusting God. Ja sa mõtled, et okei, okay, ma, ma usan nüüd Jumala alt, aga ma ei tea, mis nüüd juhtub. And then just before you take that step, it's flood time. Ja siis otse enne seda, kui sa nii-öelda sammu võtad, on üle uujutuse ja aeg. So not only do we have to cross a, a river, which is going to be a mirror. Nii-öelda mitte ainult me ei pea mingi läbi jõe minema, mis oleks juba ime 
It's flood season. It's harvest season. Praegu on lõikusaeg ja üleujutamise aeg. And so now it's, it's worse than what we would have thought. Sega nüüd on veel hullem, kui me oleks arvanud, et see võis olla. But listen, it's still going to take a miracle either way, right? Aga igata pidi on nimet, vaja on nii. And nothing is impossible for our God. Ja mitte miski pole võimatu meie Jumale jaoks. And whether it's a, a normal river or a flooding river, it's still going to take a miracle. Ja, ja on see siis tavaline jõgi, mis voolab või siis on ka üleujutuse ajal olev jõgi, Ikkagi on nime vaja. And in verse 16 and it says in the, uh, the water from up the stream stopped flowing and it piled up in a heap in a great distance away in the town called Adam in the vicinity of Zaran while, while the water was flowing down to the sea of uh, Arba the salt water sea was completely cut off so the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Ja üle pool uh, voolav vesi ei seisma jäädes paisu taha uh, väga kaugel uh, Sardani linna Külje alla asuva Adami linna juures ja vesi, mis voolas alla lauskmaa mere, soolamere, kadus täiesti ja rahvas läks üle Eeriku kohalt. And so they could have said, you know, it's flood season, we're not going to go. Nad oleksid võinud öelda, jah, praegu on üle huvitamise aeg, et me ei, me, ei, me ei kavatsa üle minna. Let's wait a couple months and then we'll go. Ootame veel paar kuud ja lähme siis üle. But they chose to believe God. Aga nad äh, otsustasid, et nad usaldavad Jumalat. Right in the, right in the face of something that seems Millegi keskel, mis tundus täiesti võimatu. They chose to believe God at his word. Nad otsustasid usaldada Jumala, et tema sõna. They believed God that what he promised would happen. Nad uskusid, et see, mida Jumal neile teatas, et see saab juhtuma. And we read this last week in Joshua 1 and verse 9. Ja eelmisel nädalal me lugesime seda Joosua esimesest peadükis 19. salmist. This is what God had commanded to Joshua. Ja see oli see, mis käs, mis Jumal andis Joosuale. He said, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified and do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joosua 1:9 Eks ole mina sind käskinud ole vahva ja tugev ära, ära kohku ja ära karda sest isand su Jumal on sinuga kõikial kuhu sa lähed. And so as we said last week this is tip 1 to take in our promised land. Sega nagu mõtsime et see on on esimene nii-öelda näpuneide selleks et käia oma tootustes. Is that we would be strong and courageous. Et sa oleksid tugev ja julge. But today this is tip 2. Ja täna selline vi ja number 2 on see is that you would not be afraid but you would only believe et sa ei et ära tunne hirmu vaid usu ainult do not be afraid only believe ära tunne hirmu ainult usu and church let me just give you this reminder again this morning ja ma täna annan sulle siis meelde tuletuse there is nothing that is impossible for god et mitte miski pole jumala jaoks võimatu amen <laughs> And for, for, for us, it might seem impossible. Ja but nothing is impossible for God. Aga mitte miski pole Jumala jaoks võimatu. And if he said it in his word, ja kui tema on oma sõna seda öelnud, he can do it in your life. Ja võib seda korda saata sinu elus. And it doesn't matter how impossible it looks. Ja vahe pole kui võimatu asi tundub. We serve a miracle working God. Me teenime Jumala, kes te ime tegusid. And so as we keep reading here to verse 17, so kui me loome edasi 17. salmist, and it says in the priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while the Israelites passed by until the whole nation had completely uh, uh, had completed the crossing on dry ground. <laughs> Joosu, uh, 317. Preesid, kes kantsid Isanda seadus laegast, jäid kindlalt seisma kuivale keset Jordanit ja kogu Israel läks üle kuiva mööda, kuni kogu rahvas viimseni oli läinud üle Jordani. And the fact that this was dry ground they were crossing over is a miracle. Ja see fakt, et nad läksid kuival pinnal üle, sest on täiel kime. Because just minutes before, sest paar minutit tagasi, the river was flowing and it was muddy. See j- jõgi voolas ja, ja see oli mudane. And not only was it normal flow it was extra muddy because it was flood season ja mitte see on lihtsalt tavaline nii-öelda jõevool mis oli ülekend vaid see oli veel üleujutus ka olnud seda kõik on oleks pidanud muda olema and so here this is almost like it was at the red sea nii see on peaaegu täpselt sama moodi nagu oli punase merega where, where god uh, t- spoke to moses and moses lifted up his rod and they crossed the red sea on rääkis, dry ground kus jumal rääkis moosesega ja need läksid üle ja mooses nii on tõsis üles oma keepi ja nad läksid kuivalt maal üle but god is showing them that I am with with Joshua and I am with you just like I was with Moses. Aga Jumal näitab sin neile seda, et ma olen Joosuaga ja ma olen teega samamoodi nagu ma olin Moosesega. And so th- this this ha- this what you know this this had to be a a large piece of ground that was dry. Ja see pidi olema üks suur maa jupp, mis oli kuiv. Because we have uh, 
you know, nobody knows for sure, but there was anywhere between 4 million and 7 million Israelites. Ja sest me ei tea täpselt, aga oli kuskil 4 miljoni ja 7 miljoni vahel neid Israelasid. And they had to cross this river. Ja nad pidid üle minema sellest jõest. And so I don't think it was just a little, like an aisle that we have here this morning. Sega ma usu, et see oli selline ojakene, mis on umbesed sama laiga nagu see vahekaik, mis meil siin on. Because first of all, they had to be one kilometer away from the ark. Ja sest esiteks nad pidid olema ühe kilometri kaugusel sellest laekast. And so when this river parted, the whole thing dried up it was a great empty riverbed sega kui nad nii-öelda need pressid läksid sinna vette ja sa kuivas ära siis see pidi olema üks väga suur jääjub mis sel mis sel ära kuivas and so i'm sure it took several hours for millions of people to walk across this dry riverbed sega ma sunn et sa võist tunda aega võtta selleks et terve see grub rahva hulk saaks üle minna sellest jõest and only god could have made that muddy ground dry ja ainult jumal võis teha nimade et see muudane pinnas on kuiv you know there was no other reason for it mingit muud põhjust ei saanud olla selles remember when they crossed the red sea though aga mäetad seda hetke kui nad läksid punasest merest üle it says that the winds blew and dried up the ground and siis rääkis seda et tuul puhus ja kuivatas seda maad nii-öelda and so you could almost think okay well it was the wind that helped them to have dry ground. Et sa võid mõelda seda, et okei, okay, see tuul kuivatas seda pinnast, et siis see aitas seda maal olla kuiv. But in this situation, Aga it was selles, instant. Selles olukorras see oli kohene. A muddy river flowing, all of a sudden, tšuu. Mudane, mudane jõgi voolab ja järsku on kuiv pinnas. And so this, this is amazing. See on imeline. Now, how would you like to have been one of the 750,000 Jericho people? Uh, How would you like to have been somebody living in Jericho? Kuidas sa oleksid tahnud olla üks nendest inimestest, kes elas Jerikust olla hetkel? There were 750 000 that lived there. Sa oli kumbes 750 000 inimest. And so here, the, the, these people, they're, they're watching what's going on. Need inimesed näevad seda, mis seal toimub. And they see millions of Jews camping on the other side of the river. Ja nad näevad seda, kuidas miljonid juudid teisel pool jõge on lihtsalt telkimas. And they're just hoping to themselves, Please stay on that side of the river. They're thankful there's a river between Jericho and this large group of people. But then suddenly they see the river dry up. And they look on the horizon and they see the waters piling up. And all of a sudden this river now is dry ground. Ja järsku selle jõesemel on kuiv maa. And then the Israelites start crossing this river. Ja siis need Israelised hakkavad üle tulema vaikselt. I'm sure it wasn't the best day. Ma muusun, et see ei olnud Jeriko, Jeriko laste just parim päev. It wasn't a day they were partying. Et see ei olnud päev, kus nad pidutsesid. It was a day they were watching to see what's going to happen now. See oli päev, kus nad vaatasid ja jälgisid, et mis nüüd hakkab toimuma. But the thing they would have also noticed is that the Ark of the Covenant was at the center of of this river. Aga veel üks asi, mida nad oleksid märganud, oli see, et, et see sealsul aegas oli selle jõe keskel. And as they looked down from their great walls, ja kui nad vaatasid alla oma suurtelt müüride pealt, they saw the ark in the center and nobody within a kilometer of it. Et nad nägid seda sealsul aegas seal keskel ja mitte kedagi kilometri piirides. And then God was showing the enemies of Israel it's all about the ark. Ja Jumal siis üritas näjata nendele, et kõik on selles sealsul aegas. The power is in the ark. Ja vägi on selles laegas. The reason we're able to cross this river is because of the ark. Ja põhjus, miks me saame üle minna sellest jõest, on see sealsul aegas. And again for us today, that ark is a representation of Jesus. Ja jällegi meie jaoks tänasel päeval on see laegas nii-öelda pilt Jeesusest. And that is only because of Jesus that we can walk in the blessings that God has planned for you and I. Ja ainult läbi Jeesuse me saame käia nendest tõotustest, mis Jumalal on sinu jaoks. And so here in Josh, Joshua then chapter 4. We're not going to read the first part of this just for time. Nüüd jällegi me lähme edasi järgmise peadükiga, aga me aja kokku hõi mõttes ei loe terve peadüki. And so verses 1 through verse 13. Let me just tell you how the story goes. Esimene salmis 13. salmi, me lasme lihtsalt räägin, kuidas see lugu sinna edas läheb. You could read this later on today. Sa võid seda hiljem täna lugeda. But God gives them instruction. Aga Jumal annab neile juhtnõrid. As they go into this river. Ja kui nad lähevad sinna jõke. That some of the strongest guys that they have. Ja need kõige tugevamad tüüvik, kes neil on. Are to pick up boulders that, 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 that you know, as big as they can carry. Et nad tõstaksid üles nii suure kivi, kui nad sealt kätte saavad. And they're to take these boulders out of the Jordan River. Ja et nad peavad välja võtma need nii-öelda kivid sellest jõest ja tooma nad kaldale. And he tells them to take those stones to the other side to build a memorial. Ja ta ütles neile, et tooks, et nad tooksin need kivid teisele poole, et teha siis sellise mänestusmärgi. Now I want you to understand, these stones would have been different 
than any of the other stones that would have been around there. Nüüd ma tahan, et saaksid aru, et need kivid, mis, mis nad seal võtsid, olid hoopis teistsugused kui kivid, mis kõigal mujal ümber ringi olid. Because these stones have probably been in that river for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Sest need kivid olid selles jões olnud, ma ei tea, sadu tuhandeid aastaid. But, but here in the desert, all of the rocks are very jaggedy and very... Uh, in the... There was no smooth stones in the desert. But you know these great big stones, they're pulling out of the river, they're, they're smooth and they're polished because of the water that's run over them for all these years. And so as they pull these rocks out of the Jordan, they're going to be different than any other rocks around there. And, and they are to set up a memorial that is going to stand out and it's going to be different than anything else. And so now I want to pick up in this story now in, in Joshua chapter 4 and verse uh, 14. And it says, In that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of Israel and they revered him in all the days of his life just as they revered Moses. And then the Lord said to Joshua, command the priest carrying the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan. Ja isend rääkis Joosua ka öeldes, käsi preestreikes kannavad tunnistuse laegast, et nad tuleksid Jordanist üles. What? God, all of a sudden, God changes the name of the ark. Järsku, Jumal nimetab seda laega soopis teistmoodi. To now, it was always called the Ark of the Covenant. Or it was called the Ark of the Lord. Now, God changes the name. And he calls it the Ark of Testimony. What, did God forget what the name was? No, God did not forget this. This is a beautiful picture of, of, of what, what we have in Jesus. Remember in Revelations? Do you remember how the Bible tells us that we are to overcome? In Revelations it tells us this. That we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. Ja oma tunnistuse sõnast. By the blood of the lamb. Läbi talle vere. And by the word of our testimony. Ja läbi oma tunnistuse sõna. And so it says that these two things working together is how we overcome in life. Ja see viiskus, me saame elus võidu on läbi nende kahe kombineerimise. And so this is the power of the testimony. Ja see on see vägi, selle tunnistuse vägi. That they entered into the promised land. Mille läbi nad sisenesid sinna tõetud maale. And it's by the power of our testimony today. Ja see on läbi meie tunnistuse tänapäeval. That we can enter into the promise that God has for us. Mille läbi meie saame sisenada enda tõetud maale, mis Jumal on meie jaoks on. The testimony about what Jesus has done for you. See tunnistus sellest, mida Jeesus on sinu jaoks teinud. So that you can walk in the promises that God has planned. And you've got to know there's great promises that are waiting for, for you as an individual. And there's great promises that are waiting for us as the church. And as we believe God, and as we speak about what God is doing for us, that is how we overcome and that we can walk in the, the God's best in life. And so, you know, don't, don't just put your focus on Jesus you know, hanging on the cross. And there, there's a lot of Christians that do that. But we're not putting our focus on Jesus hanging on a cross. Because listen, he's not there anymore. Amen. Thank God he went there, but he's not there anymore. And desert Christians, they want to look at Jesus hanging on the cross. But the Bible says the cross was a place of defeat 
it was not a place of victory. Aga piil räägi sellest, et rist oli kaotuse koht, mitte võidukoht. What we want to do is we want to focus on Jesus as our risen savior. Mille me tahame keskenduda on keskenduda Jeesusele, kes on meie üles tõusnud päästja. We want to put our focus on him as our champion. Me tahame panna oma fookuse tema, tema peale kui meie isiklik champion. That he won for us everything that we could have in life. Et tema võitis meie jaoks kõik, mis meile võib kuuluda tänasel päeval. And that he is now sitting at the right hand of God in heaven. Ja et nüüd ta istub Jumala panemal käel taevas. And so promised land people, they're going to keep their focus on the victory. Sega need inimesed, kes on jõudnud tõutud maal, nad hoiavad oma, oma, oma silmi võiduka Jeesuse peal. They're going to keep their, their focus on the blessings of God. Nad hoiavad oma silmi Jumala õnnistuste peal. But desert people, they, they want to just, they want to talk about what Jesus did on the cross all the time. Kõrbes olevad inimesed räägivad kogeks selles, mida Jeesus tegi risti peal. And, and they want to, they want to just, they, they don't really want to talk about what Jesus does now. Nad ei taha rääkida sellest, mida Jeesus nüüd teeb. And, and, but what I want to do is, I want us to focus on what Jesus does now. Now. Aga mida ma tahaks, et me teeksime, on kesinuks sellele, mida Jeesus teeb praegu. I want us to know why did Jesus go and suffer on the cross. Ma tahan teada, miks Jeesus läks sinna risti peale ja ja nüüd suri seda risti surma. Why did he pay that that price for you and I? Miks tema maksis selle hinna sinu ja minu eest? Why did he become a curse? Miks sai tema needuseks meie jaoks? Let's not just leave him there and feel sorry for Jesus that he had to die for. Ära ei jäta teda sinna risti peale ja haletse teda, et oi Jeesus pidi ristele minema. Let's know why he did that. Teadke, mille pärast ta tegi seda. And then receive the blessing of it. Ja siis võtke mastuse ja õnnistus selle läbi. And he paid a price for us. Ja tema maksis hinna meie eest. So that we could walk in the blessings of God. Selleks, et me saaksime käia Jumala tõhutustes. Now we could have fellowship with our heavenly Father. Ja me saaksime olla osadusel oma taevas isaga. And so what I want to know is why he did it and where he is now. Sega mida ma tahan teha on see, et teada, mida ta teeb ja kus ta on praegu. Why he did it. Miks ta tegi seda? And where he is now. Ja kus ta on praegu. Those are the two questions that are important for me. Ja kaks tähtsalt küsimust mõju jaoks. And he did it so that we could be free. Ja ta tegi seda selle jaoks, et me oleksime vabad. He did it so that we could be blessed. Ta tegi seda selle jaoks, et me võiksime olla õnnistatud. And where is he now? Ja kus ta on praegu? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Ta on Jumala nüüd isa paremal käel. Interceding for you. Kus ta peespaal võib meie jaoks. Making a testimony for us ja on tunnistuseks seal meie jaoks so that we can have the blessings of god in our lives selleks et meile võiks kuuluda jumala tõotused igapäevasele elus and so you know jesus went to the cross because of the joy that was set before him jesus läks ristile täna selle rõõmune mis ootas teda ees and our testimony needs to be about the joy that is set before all of us. Ja meie tunnistus peaks olema sellest rõõmus, mis on meid ees ootamas. We are to tell people about the blessing of God on our lives. Me peaks me rääkima inimestele oma õnnistuses, mis on Jumala läbi meie elu tulnud. And we're to tell people what Jesus has done so that we could go to heaven. Ja me peaks me minema rääkima inimestele sellest, mida Jeesus on teinud selleks, et me saaksime taevasse minna. All right, so here we, we let's keep reading here with, with verse 17. Kui loeme edasi Joosua 4 ja 17. salmist. John or Joshua 4:17. Ja Joosua 4 ja 17. And it says so Joshua commanded the priests to come up out of the Jordan. Ja Joosua andis peresistele käsu öeldes tulge Jordanist üles. And the priests came out of the river carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord and no sooner had they set their foot on the dry ground than the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at the flood stage as before. Ja, ja kui preestid, kes kandsid Isanda sealdas laegast, tulid üles Jordani kesked ja preestid ja tallad olid lahkunud kuivale, siis pöörus Jordani vesi tagasi oma paika ja voolas nagu ennegi üle kõigi kallaste. I want you to understand this. Mõista nüüd seda ka. That the waters returning to the way they were before. Et, et veed läksid täpselt tagasi nii nagu nad enne olid. Was just as much of a miracle. See, et nad läksid täpselt samasse paika tagasi, on sama suur ime. As the waters stopping and being held up before. Kui see, et enemse vesi jäi kinni ja ja ühte paika ootama. Have any of you ever watched like Discovery Channel or something and watched pictures of how the uh, you know what happens if a dam breaks a little bit? Et oled näinud pilte nii-öelda Discovery sellest, kuidas nii-öelda mingi tamm näiteks hakkab katki minema või mis siis juhtub. And that water starts coming out a little bit more and you know it can wipe out whole towns. Et alguses see vesi seal hakkab vaikselt välja tulema ja siis lõpuks see tõeb seista survega, et see võib terved linnad eest lihtsalt uhuda. The Jordan River has been held up all day long. Jordan jõgi on terve väga seal üleval olnud. And if God would have just taken his hand off of there. Ja kui Jumal oleks oma käe lihtsalt selle peal ära võtnud. It would have been a tsunami and it wiped everybody out. Siis oleks on täielikult tsunami tsunami ja kõik oleks lihtsalt minema püüitud seal. But, but it, was, it was a miracle. Aga see oli ime. Here the, we see the water piling up in the distance. Siin eemal see vesi nüüd kogunes seal. And, and you know, 
that's got to be kind of cool. Ja se, se on päris lahja vaatte, mistä mun kyytän ettei. And then all of a sudden, God just lightly just lets it go and puts it all right back to normal like nothing happened. Ja siis äsken Jumalan päivä selvä vei, että oli kuin takaisin tässä niin, niin kuin mitä kuin pareksi juhtumaan. And so it was just miracle after miracle after miracle. Ja se oli ime ime järellä. Showing the people, I am with you and I've got you. Näitä maksi nimestä, että minä olen teega ja te olette minun käs. And just trust in me. Ja lisät usaltaka luotke he usaltaka minun päälle. You're going to have everything I promised you. Ja teidän saa kuulma kaikki, mistä olen teille tuottanut. And the, the enemies too are looking at this and they're thinking, who are these people? Ja sama monti ne vaennas, et näevad kõik, seda pealt mõtlevad, kes on need inimesed. What is going on here? <laughs> this is not on? normal. See ei ole normaalne. And so here the, we see great, great miracles. One thing happening after another. See, me võime näha suuri inimesi toimumas siin üksteisi järel. In verse 19, as we keep reading. 19. salm, kui me seda edasi loeme. It says, and on the, the, the tenth day, Of, of the first month, the people went out from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. Rahvas tuli Jordani äärest üles esimese kuu kümnendal päeval ja nad leid leiri üles Gilgalisse Jeriku idapoolse pirile. And now this is, this is kind of where we're going to stop today because this is kind of an important... It doesn't seem like an important verse, but it's an important verse. Ja see on üks paik, kui me jääme täna seisma korraks, sest on tegelikult üks väga tähtis koht, kuigi see ei tund väga tähtis. Because Gilgal had a very important place in, in Israel. Sest Gilgal oli siin tähtis paik Iisraelast. Gilgal it was a, has a very important place in Bible history. Ja Gilgalis on väga tähtis selline paik nii-öelda üldse piibi ajaluks. And it was the place that God uh, takes away the sins of Israel. See on paik, kus ta nii-öelda võtab nende iisalaste patud ära. And, and uh, we're going to look at this a little bit more even next week as we go into this next chapter. Ja järgmisel me uurime seda veel natuke rohkem, as kui me läheme siit järg- so järgmiste saimide peale. All right. and, and so here Gilgal, it was, this was a place of a covenant with God. See Gilgal oli paik, nii-öelda, kus nad seadsid lepingu Jumalaga. This was a place where, where they said God's word never See oli paik, kus nüüd ütlesid, et Jumala sõna ei tea mitte kunagi alt. This was a place of consecration and of knowing my God is with me. See oli paik, kus nad püüdsid ennast ja teadsid, et Jumal on minuga. And Gilgal was, was important throughout then from this time forward. Ja Gilgal muutus tähtsaks paigaks nii-öelda sellest paigast edaspiliseks. David would camp out at Gilgal. Taavet nii-öelda lõi leiri üles ka seal samas Gilgali juures. He would camp out there every, after every battle. Peal igat lahingut ta läks sinna nii-öelda lõiuma tegelikult. They would go to Gilgal. Nad läksid sinna Gilgalisse. Gilgal was a place where where Elijah was taking up into heaven. Gilgal oli see paik, kus Eelia tõstati üles. And do you remember when he when Elijah was taking up into heaven, it says that his mantle fell down? Ega sa mäeta seda, kus sa räägib, et kui Eelia tõstati üles ja siis tema see kuub kukkus alla. And he picked up the mantle, Elisha picked up the mantle and he went over to the Jordan and he said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? Ja kus see Elisa võttis üles Eelia kuue ja, ja läks, ütles, he said, Mantar, to, took his mantle. Yeah, and said. Uh, and he, he went over to the Jordan and he struck the, the Jordan with the mantle. Ja ta läksiga ta sinna Jordani eelde ja ta lõi seda, uh, selle kuuega seda jõge. And it says that he went across the, the Jordan, the, the water split and he went across the Jordan. Ja ta räägib sellest, et see vesi läks ka, samamoodi kaheks ja ta läks üle sellest. Sealt. It was at this same place. See oli selles samas Gilgali kohas. Um, Gilgal was, was a place where... where John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the Jordan. Gilgal oli, oli sama paik, kus Risti Johannes ristis Jeesust. Ta samamoodi ristis seal Jordani ões. And Gilgal was the place where they took these stones from the river and set up and built this memorial. Ja Gilgal oli see sama paik, kuhu need iisraelased viisid need kaksest kivi ja lõid selle altari nii-öelda Jumala jaoks. And they built this, this, this altar that was, was stood for, for generation after generation. Ja nad lõid selle altari, mis, mis läbi põlvkondade seisis seal. And, and, and what they were saying is, look what the Lord has done. Ja mida nad selle läbi tegid, olid ütlesid, et, et vaata, mida Jumal on teinud. Look what the Lord has done. Vaata, mida Isa on Jumal on teinud. And every time there was a victory for Israel, they would come back and remember what the Lord has done ja for them. Isra- Israelastel oli võit, siis nad läksid sinna tagasi vaatsid, mida Jumal on teinud nende jaoks. And they set up this memorial in their life. Ja nad lõid sellise, sellise mälestusmärgi oma elus. And I believe they would come here and they would go back over the history and remember all that God has done. Ja mõsu mida nad tegid oli see, et nad käisid seal paigus ja käisid meenutamas kõik seda, mis Jumal oli nende nii, nende jaoks siia mani teinud. And it brings me to kind of point number three. Ja see toob mind nii-öelda nagu punkt number või näpunäite number kolme juurde. Is that that you know 
as believers, I think we need to set up memorials in our lives. Et ustlikuna ma usun, et me peaksime ise samamoodi ehitama mänestusmärke enda elus. We need to set up memorials in our lives about what God has done for us. Me peaks olema siis meenutuspunkti või mänestusmärgid enda elus, kus me meenutame neid asju, mida Jumal on meie jaoks juba teinud. I think we need to remember the times that God has come through for us year after year, month after month. Day after day. Muslim, we beaksim me meenutama pidevalt endale seda, mida Jumal on teinud meile päevast päeva, nädalast nädalas ja kuus kuusse. I think for us to remember the times that God has helped us. Et me meenutaksim neid aegu, kus Jumal on meid aidanud. The times that God has provided for us. Neid aegu, kus Jumal on varustanud meie jaoks. The times that God changed everything so that we could continue on. Neid aegu, kus Jumal on muutunud absoluutselt kõik selleks, et me saaksime edasi minna. Because those are the things that are later going to strengthen our faith that we could be able to accomplish what God asks us to do. Asja, mis hiljem tugevdavad meie usku, et me saaksime saavutada veel rohkem. And accomplish what God asks us Seda, to mida do. Jumal on meid palunud teha siis. Amen. God has got great things for you to do. Jumal on sind ees ootama suured asjad. And for you to be able to step out and do them. Selleks, et sina saaksid välja astuda ja teha neid asju. You're going to have to remember what it is that God has done for you in the past. Sul on vaja meeles pidada ja meenutada seda, mida Jumal on sinu jaoks teinud varem. Remind yourself of the faithfulness of God. Meenuta endale Jumala ustavust. How did you get here? Kuidas sa jõudsid siia paika? And the way you got here is how you're going to get there. Ja see viis, kuidas sa jõudsid siia paika, see näitab sulle, kuidas sa saad edasi minna. It's by the love and the mercy of our heavenly Father. And so God will do things that you cannot do. God is going to change things that are impossible and he's going to make them possible. Anybody had an impossible thing turned to possible? I know I have in my life. Time after time after time. And these are the things that I remember to help me and give me the strength to move forward. And need on asja, mis ma tuletan meelde ja meenutan selleks, et saada jõudu, selleks et edasi minna. Because in your life, see sinu elus, faith is not going to just be for the comfortable gushy things. Eh, sul ei saa olema usku lisand nende mugavate ja lihtsate asjade jaoks. Faith is going to have to be used for some dangerous things. Sul on vaja usku selle jaoks, et läbi minna ohtikest asjadest. Faith is going to have to be used in some difficult times. Usku on vaja kasutada keerulist või rasketel aegadel. It's not just for the wonderful things. See ei ole lihtsalt nende imeliste toledat asjad jaoks. You understand what I mean? Saad aru, mis ma mõtlen selle jaoks. It's not just a faith for a brand new Mercedes band. Oh, kas on siis tõesti usk selle jaoks, et mu saab olema täiesti tuttu uus mersu? No, that's not just what faith is. Ei, usk ei ole ainult selle jaoks. Faith is what we use to get through the difficult times. Dark times of life. Usk on see, mida me kasutame selleks, et läbi saada rasketest ja keerulisest paikadest enda elus. And for me in my life, I've set up memorials to help me to move forward. Ja oma enda jaoks ja oma enda elus ma olen üles seadunud see mänestus paiku, mida ma saan meenutada enda elus. For me, the day that I gave my life to Jesus is a day I'll never forget. Näiteks see päev, kus mina ansin enda elu isandale, on päev, mida ma ei unust mitte kunagi. Where he filled my heart with the love that I had never seen. Kus ta täits minu südame armastusega, mida mina ei olnud elus ees varem kogenud. Minu jaoks on mänestus märk, mille ma olen enda elus üles seadnud. Ja kui ma sain püha vaimegu täidetada, ja ma haksin rääkima nii-öelda taevases keeles, see on mänestus märk minu elus. See on mänestus märk minu elus. Was real, and this is something that is powerful. So, the paikos me teatsin, et jumal on reaalne ja ja et see asi on väline. It helped me to become a better Christian. Sa etas mul saada paremaks kristuseks. It helped me to be stronger in my prayer life. Sa etas mul nüüd saada tugevamaks oma palvelus. It changed my life forever. See muutis minu elu igaveseks. I knew this was real and powerful. Me teatsin, et see on tõeline ja väline. Another time when God spoke to me to go to Bible school. Meil uskord, kui jumal rääkis mulle, et ma peaksin minema viibli kooli. He spoke to my heart and told me the plan that, that what I was to do now. Ta rääkis mulle plaanist, et mida ma peaksin järgmisena tegema. Go to Bible school. Et mine piibli kooli. That's a memorial that I've set in my, my life. See on mänestusmärk, mis ma olen enda elus üles seadnud. Because that brought me to where I am today. Sest see tõi mind siia paika, kus ma praegu olen. And I remember that and I, 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 I rehearse that. Ja ma mäletan neid... I, 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 uh, I go over that in my mind. Et ma mäletan neid asju ja ma meenutan neid ikka jälle endale. When I have to take another step of faith, I remember, yeah, God told me to do this and he's brought me here and 
He's going to take me where I'm going to go. Mul on vaja järgmine usu sam võtta, siis ma mäletan neid kõik teise asju, mis ta on teinud meie jaoks. Ma mäletan, et Jumal aitas mind seal, ta aitab mind edaspidi. I remember the day that I came to Estonia. Ma mäletan seda päeva, kui ma esimest korda astusin Eesti pinnale. I walked out of that airport. Kõndisin sellest lennujamast välja. And I felt like I was at home. Ja ma tundsin ennast nagu ma olisin kodus. That's not normal. No, see ei ole normaal. But I felt, wow, this is a great place. Ma tundsin, et wow, see on vinge koht, ma võiksin edal siin. And so that was a memorial in my life. Ja see oli mänestus märk minu elus. Where I knew that's this this was where god wanted me to be kus ma olin veenud ja teadsin seda et see on koht kus jumal tahab et mina oleksin 13 years ago on the day we started this church kui me istasta tagasi kui me alustasime seda kogudust and i didn't know if any was but it was going to show up or not ja ma idean et kõik kas kõigi tuleb teenistusele või mitte i just took a step of faith ma lihtsalt võtsin usu sammu and actually people showed up ja kus suures inimesed tuli kohale ja see oli päris imeline a miracle tell <laughs> nime minu jaoks and so for it was a miracle yeah yeah, yeah. and so for 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 us Sega me you know we've got to have those times meil on vaja võtta neid aegu where we know god was there kus on me need tuletame meel et jumal oli seal i remember the time that god healed my body ma tan nei kordi kus jumal on minu ihu tervendanud that i can now walk without pain in my hips et ma vain nüüd kõndida ilma et mul puusades oleks valu it was a miracle it was instantaneous see oli ime see oli hetke ja oli mul tervis there's times that god has has provided for me financially time and time again on aga kus jumal on varustanud min finansiliselt aegu ja ikka and so th- these are just a few of the, the memorials that i have in my life non lisa mõned mänestus märgid mis ma olen enda elus äh, paika seadnud i hope that you have memorials that you've set up in your life. Ma et sul on sama moodi see, et mänestus märke, mis sa saab meenutada meelest pidava. Times where you remember God came through for me right there. Aegu, kus sa mäletad seda, et Jumal aitas mind sellest hetkest läbi. And, and that, we, that we would declare look what the Lord has done. Ja me tunnistaksime seda, et vaata, mida Isand on teinud. Amen. Look what the Lord has done in your life. Vaata, mida Isand on teinud sinu elus. Don't let the devil steal those things. Ära lase saatan alla röövida neid asju. Don't forget how good God has been to you. Ära unusta seda, kui võrd hea on Jumal sinu vastu olnud. Don't forget where he's brought you from and where you are today. Ära unusta seda, kus Jumal on sind toonud ja kuhu ta on sind paigutanud praegu. Because now for me I have stronger faith in God. Es minu jaoks mun on tugevam usk Jumalasse praegu. I have stronger faith in his word. Mun on tugevam usk tema sõnasse. I believe his word over what anybody else would ever tell me. Mus on tema sõna üle kõige muu, mida kes igenast teine inimene võiks mulle öelda. And I want you to seek his word and to, to find these promises. Ma tahan, et sina otsiksid tema sõna ja leieksid need teotused enda jaoks. As your pastor, I want to help you to know what it is that God promised you. Sinu pastorina ma tahan sul aidata näha neid asju, mis Jumal on sinu jaoks. But then it's up to you to take those promises and to apply them and, and go after them in life. Ja samas on sinu teha, et, et teha, teha neid asju ja ajada neid taga enda elus. And so these are what the memorials are about. Sega see on see põhjus, miks meil on maja neid mänestusmärke. And so for us to walk in our promises. Sega me jaoks, me saaksime käia oma tõostuses. These are the tips that we've looked at so far. There's three of them. Uh, need on need kolm nii-öelda näpu näidet, mis me siia maani oleme vaadanud. First of all, you need to be strong and courageous. Esiteks, ole tugev ja julge. For you to go into the promise that God has for you, you've got to be strong and and courage. Selleks, et sa saaksid käia nendest tõotustes, mis Jumal on sinu jaoks, sul on vaja olla tugev ja julge. Number two, do not be afraid Teiseks, ära karda and only believe God. Vaid usu ainult Jumalat. Do not be afraid. Ära karda and believe your God. Ja usu oma Jumalat. And then number three. Ja kolmandaks. The third tip that we've looked at here. Kolmas näpu näide, mis me täna vaatasime. Is that we would set memorials in our life. On see, et me ehitaks nii-öelda see märksusmärke enda elus. That we would remember this is what God did. Ja me mäletaksime, et see on see, mida Jumal tegi. Look what God has done for me. Vaata, mida Jumal on teinud minu jaoks. Look what God has done for my family. Vaata, mida Jumal on teinud minu pere jaoks. Look what God has done for our church. Vaata, mida Jumal on teinud meie koguduse jaoks. Look what God has done. Vaata, mida Jumal on teinud. That time and time again. Et äh, ikka jälle aega ajal. That we would stop and we would remember all that he's done for us. Me võtaksime aega selleks, et meenutada kõik seda, mis Jumal on meie jaoks teinud. And if you will do these things, it will encourage you to be able to go and take more of what God promised to you. Ja kui sa teed neid asju, siis sa annaks sulle julgust, et saaksid rohkem võtta neid samme, mis Jumal on sinu jaoks tõotanud. And you know, the devil, he always wants you to be afraid of your future. Ja saatan taab, et sa nüüd, tunneksid hirm oma tulevikku ees. And he'll always, he'll always try, to, try to say, okay, what, what you have right now is fine, but da piga piga tore sinu juurde ütleb et kuule et see mis sul on on okei okay, aga you know okay god was with you in the desert 
but what about, what about tomorrow? You know, God's provided for you till now, okay. But what about next month? Next month doesn't look so good. If, if I were you, I would start to worry. <laughs> you know, yes, God brought you to the edge of the promised land. But there's a river in the way. What are you going to do? And so what the devil wants you to do is he wants you to fear. He wants you to back away. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to believe God. Remember what he's done. And trust him for what he said. You are going to see some great things show up in your life. You're going to see things that seem impossible become possible. And, and again, remember the, the ark of the testimony. That you would share what God has done with others. Because what God has done for you can help encourage others to believe God for the same. Because that's how we overcome our enemies. As we're telling one another, Another, what God's already done for us. And at that point, we're able to walk in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. I want that for you. I want that for our church. I want it for me. I believe that, that there's so many things out ahead of us. Things that I believe God has that we haven't even seen yet. Maybe there are things we've prayed about but we've never seen them. And I believe in the, as, as we continue to follow God we will see great things. Amen. Amen.